So, so today, I guess we're talking, we're picking up on 2013. And the adventure begins. How's my microphone look, Roy? How's my hair look? Do I look pretty? In 2013, we've started this company and we need a space. First of all, there wasn't a shop. It was like two o'clock in the morning, U-Haul backing up to a storage unit and be like, okay, are we, this wall's going to unit 305 and this LED wall's going to unit 206. Once again, we're kind of learning as we go. Uh, we have this LED wall and at this point we really are rigging all of our walls off the cheapest truss that we could find. <laughs> I don't know how to keep that PC. We'll just call it circus truss. It was like the equivalent of stuff you would use if you were like a ham radio operator or something. And like I said, it was a great opportunity for us to look back and be like, okay, this was a great learning moment. Um, and moving forward, we adjusted as we, as we did more and more shows. Getting to have those kinds of experiences with Justin to kind of show him what could be done, I learned very quickly that he's extremely creative and really good at what he does. We started gaining a lot more momentum and we started bringing contractors in to assist with uh, the labor that we needed. My first interaction with uh, GVP, I was working for AVPG and I see this bright green logo being pushed in on these cases and I was like, see him loading it in and putting these big screens together, I was like, this is really, really cool. Once again. Zero idea what we're doing at this time. After that show, I, I on the loadout, I talked to Justin and I introduced myself and I said, um, you know, I don't know anything about this technology, but I would love to learn it. He opened his arms up and said, come on. Now, all of a sudden, we were in this situation where we were this real company and had to act like a real company, which we weren't doing. And I had no clue that that moment would change my life and change my career for for everything is great. So we had this warehouse. We saw Britt Moore and we immediately were excited to even have an office. And now we needed to slowly, we were slowly, slowly starting to make some revenue, um, decent revenue. And we wanted to put all of our revenue back into the company and purchase more gear. We went from quickly from a company that we were operating out of a storage unit to um, we're getting calls all the time like, hey, we got a gig, we got a gig. In September of 2013, um, the phone rang and I answered the phone and it was a phone call that would completely change the trajectory of who we were as a company and the company that we would become. I was working as a contractor for an event called the Transplant Games of America, which is basically an Olympic style event for people who have had transplants. Now pause and understand that at this moment right now, the biggest check that I think we've got from a single client was maybe $14,000. I remember Justin getting the call for Transplant Games and that was, at that point in time, that was our biggest show we've ever done. I started working with a production company and everything was okay, but I felt like I had all these big ideas and things I wanted to do and everything seemed to fall flat. So I did what any 20-something year old would do with no contacts. I took to Google and started researching companies and there about eight pages deep I found GVP Media. And she is looking for a single source vendor to provide production services for the Transplant Games of America happening in the summer of 2014. That marks the beginning I feel like of <laughs> where I am today. So when we start talking, I'm trying to act super cool because at the same time I'm excited because this is gonna be a huge, huge client for us potentially. So I'm trying to be cool and I remember asking what the budget was and she had mentioned somewhere around the 100,000, 100 plus thousand dollar budget to which the little Justin in me was like, but really I had no idea how we were going to do this and she asked specifically point blankly is this in your wheelhouse and without hesitation without skipping a beat I said of course it's in our wheelhouse he called me 
and he was like, Chris, I need you. And I was like, okay, what do you need? He's like, I've got this really big show. I need to get it done. We'll do the LED wall. Fast forward a few weeks, uh, Gabby and I met uh, at the offices at the, uh, at the Sports Authority because there was no way I was going to have it come to our offices. It was a 1,500 foot, square foot storage unit with one office uh, and a wall unit AC. So there was no way she was coming out. A couple days later, he's like, hey, I need you to come to this meeting. We have our first meeting and GVP rolls in like six people deep. So they had a large presence. They were all looking professional and we sit down and we start talking about the event and my vision and what's needed. Instantaneously we had a connection and it worked and we flowed really well and everything really, really worked really well. Um, she's a super, super creative big thinker. I'm a super, super creative big thinker. So we just mesh. Justin has this very contagious personality that everybody loves. It was set up for the perfect collaboration. We quickly realized this is going to be a, a big event. And it's one of those, it's like, is this too big for us? Or is this going to be one of those events that like, we're going to overcome and we're going to come out on top. Next thing you know, three hours later, we had this grandiose idea of what we were going to try and pull off. And I'll never forget leaving the meeting and I looked at my supervisor kind of wanting a little bit of approval, like, is, is this okay? Should I make this switch? And she was just smiling from ear to ear and she was like, I just can't stop smiling. Then when we were walking out of the meeting, Jess and I went to lunch, I was like, I think I'm gonna need to know exactly what we're doing here. I know I've committed, but, and he tells me, and then I was like, oh, Justin, like, this is a lot. This is not like a little thing here. As every single day of planning went, you know, we just kept, you know, going and going, and it kept getting bigger and bigger. By the way, I don't know if we wanna to touch on it, Transplant Games was like the biggest mess up of my career. So my task moving forward here now was that I had to get a budget together and get some numbers to give to Gabby. And keep in mind that at this point, all we were was an LED company. We, ha I don't know about audio or lighting or, I mean, we knew about video camera stuff. <laughs> Chris put my mind at ease as far as the audio and the rigging stuff went and some lighting, but he didn't have enough lighting. So he put me in touch with a company that we had started doing a little bit of work with out of Oklahoma City, Toucan Productions. In the midst of them trying to come up with numbers and me trying to make sure that this is the company I wanted to go with, I remember calling Justin and saying to him, so there's one caveat to bringing you on this event. She had asked me if we could take on the construction of a cauldron. In my mind, I'm thinking, because you're a production company, you, you could just make it, right? <laughs> I was like, absolutely, we could do this. Not a problem. I don't know if you all know what a cauldron looks like, but almost imagine like Olympic Games size cauldron that they need a like a huge torch. And they're like, oh, like, you know, like one of those torches that you like hand, like, no, no, no. One that you're gonna have to move with a semi. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> there were two things that I required for the cauldron. One, it has to light. Number two, I wanted a big flame. And Justin's like, okay, well, how big? I want you to go as big as you can. Understand that it's not like you can go into Google and search cauldron builders and then 20 pop up. No, we, the, the, this is a very specific thing. We finally find this company out of California, I believe, to build this cauldron for us. We'd seen diagrams of this cauldron. Finally, the day arrives. We're out in the middle of a field somewhere. And I remember we pull up and I'm like, there's, there's no way that's the cauldron. That's, that's, wait, that's it? And it's this giant, like massive cauldron being like, and there are these people just taking it off the truck. And I'm like, this thing is huge. How are we gonna transport this thing? And I feel like it was one of those like comedy movies where the guy with the transport hands the receipt, it's like, it's yours now, good luck. <laughs> truck shows up, the cauldron's there, it's beautiful, it's painted, it's just, it's a glorious, glorious day. And we set the cauldron up. I think Chris at the time hit the ignite button and we were a good ways away from the cauldron. I remember we were a good maybe 50, 60 feet back, maybe 30 feet back. And when that thing lit, oh mama, whoa, that was a big flame. I mean, I could feel the heat 
30 feet back from where I was standing. It was a big flame. And it was one of those moments where the planning and all the hard work that you'd put into building this thing and designing it finally paid off and you're like, this is, this is awesome. Whew. Dodged a bullet, who made it happen? Now we were awarded this contract. It's over $100,000 and <laughs> we have to make this work. Justin and I developed a really good working relationship. We really fed off of each other's ideas and creativity and we were constantly growing this event. And the more people got involved in ideas that were thrown at us and I would take them back to Justin and be like, hey, can we do this? It was always, yeah, let's try to do it. That's a great idea. Gabby was leaning on me as the production guy to be like, do you think this is something good? So one of those great ideas was we were going to try to set a world record for the largest balloon sculpture. In my head, in all honesty, I was like, I think this would be fantastic. And then Gabs had reached out to this company and they were gonna build us the biggest space shuttle made out of balloons that we were gonna put in front of the state. I remember getting the drawings for the sculpture sent to my email. And the first time I saw them, I looked at it and I kind of cocked my head and I was like, um, I wasn't really sure how to have the conversation, but I could tell from the drawing that it was looking a little phallic. But they told me that they were gonna fix it. Okay, great. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had made a terrible, terrible error. And when you are sitting inside the stadium and looking at the balloon, it just looks like a very big You can't make this up. It, it was just an epic fail. I remember people <laughs> posting on social media about it and I was like, oh no, what did we do? It was an epic fail, but we will learn. So the next time we build a balloon structure, you know what? I know we're gonna ask more questions. As we were working on this event, Justin became uh, a great support system for me because I had to sell every, every idea that we came up with and wanted to implement and wanted to spend money on. I had to sell it to the CEO of the Transplant Games. We had all these ideas of videos that we wanted to shoot and what those were going to look like and sound like. And so to give him an idea, I just quickly edited together this video. Which I didn't know that she had that in her, but she created this amazing video that she played for the CEO. And I remember sitting there being like, whoa, that's a really good video. And I was sitting next to Justin and I remember looking at him and being like, don't you dare judge me. I am not a video editor. The CEO absolutely loved the video, loved the pitch, loved the concepts and the ideas totally gave us the green light to go ahead. From that point forward, it became this kind of ongoing joke that Justin was like, hey, once this thing's done, if you need some work after this contract of yours expires here with the Transplant Games, maybe you should think about coming to work over here with GVP. I would laugh and I would be like, yeah, that's never gonna happen. Gabby and I started meeting very regularly and just getting the flow of how the show is gonna go. She, Gabby started doing, she was producing the event, so she would come down with a rundown and ideas. For example, oh, hey, by the way, during the opening ceremony, when we do the national anthem, we're gonna have a horse ride run into the stadium with a flag. And she was like, is that gonna be a problem? I was like, absolutely not. I think that Justin say yes and we'll figure it out later, or it's not even that he says yes. He goes, oh, not a problem. That's what he says. And whenever I hear not a problem, I'm like, oh, there's gonna be a bunch of problems. July 9 rolls around and it's loading day. Uh, Chris and Brad, have their two departments from a lighting and audio department. Everything's going fine, loading is fine. We're taking care of all the video elements. We're getting our rehearsals done. The TerraFloor is getting put on the field for uh, the horse running. The cauldron is being placed. Our big phallic balloon is being built. Everything is really, really coming together. You know what? We make a really good team. So day comes, my nerves are all over the place. The only thing that I asked the whole time was that Gabby was producing the show. So I wanted her to make sure that she was sitting next to me the entire time while we were producing the show. Because I was really the one putting together the scripting and the run of show and the flow. And so I knew all the intricate details of what was going on and he was calling the show. Just, that was my one thing. Okay, no problem. We get into the show and there were a couple things that happened. Once I sat down to put my comms on and start show, 
I was supposed to be on a private line. And there was some sort of mix up with the comm system. And Justin could hear every single person back channels in his ears, and as could I, and everyone else. And he was furious. And the lady that they had used to kind of be the floor manager over there was, I think, feeling overwhelmed. And she just decided, yep, I'm not doing this. She took off the headset and she left. And I found myself standing there for most of the night until this happened because she literally handed me my headset or her headset and was like, I quit. She had known, you know, the order of everything, how everything was happening. Nobody else knew what was going on. So I got up and I was like, Justin, I have to go out there. We were supposed to have these ballistic bomb trained horses. And I don't know a lot about horses. But I was like, man, this horse is starting to look a little antsy. And all these people are like chanting and the horses did not like that. So I ran out there, Chris ended up stepping in and somehow getting control of the horse. And then when the horse finally went out, it was definitely not used to the fireworks because I think he was a bit spooked by them. And it was just, there, there was a little chaos for, for a few moments. Let's just say it was a little dicey. Uh, there was a little yelling, but we got through it. Uh, there were a couple of hiccups during the show, like Gandhi hitting the national anthem. The biggest mess up of my career. We are in the remembrance moments, and the song starts with a drum one with a bum, 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 bum. And um, so I kept looping the songs and looping the songs for the remembrance. And at some point, I just, I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or I went to go hit the remembrance moment song again. And instead, I hit the backup track for the national anthem, which starts with a bump, 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 bump. Oh, say. And then I hear the oh, say, and I'm like, oh, no. And I go stop, and I go to play the remembrance moment again, and then the iPad just crashes. The music stops. The national anthem is starts playing. And I'm like, what? Our national anthem singer is sings live, so I'm like, why, where is this national anthem coming from? Why do we have this? And why is it playing right now? That silence through the stadium, full stadium, was like, it was deafening. And on, by the way, on the comm, you know, you have the producers, what's going on? What's going on? Screaming at your ear. And it was probably only a few seconds, but if you've ever worked in live production, a few seconds, of dead silence feels like an eternity. And I'm like, ah, and I'm like wigging out, freaking out, and I go, click the track, and it was bump, 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 bump. And my like heart sank, and I was like, oh. And I feel like to this day, that was the biggest mess up of my career. Epic file, but we recovered. Once we got into the show itself, after the parade of athletes, and after it actually started, Everything was pretty much good. There was one other moment where I had to leave Justin's side and it was because we had done rehearsals with the cauldron and the lighting of the cauldron. There was a person going to light the cauldron. There was just really one rule and that was there was a, a line marking, you can't go past this point because if you go past this point, we can't set off pyro. You have somebody that is professional, like you'll have a, uh, an athlete come out and carry this, this torch and do this and something important. But in this scenario, the sponsor themselves really wanted to carry this torch. So basically what was supposed to happen, she lights the cauldron, the cauldron lights, and then all this pyro is supposed to go off. We train her, say, you know, walk up to this line and go down, and as soon as you go down, it's gonna go pop, 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 and then boom. She is, you know, going out there, she's waving, it's this beautiful moment. We're all excited, because it's the end of the show, we made it through, everything's gone pretty well. She, I'm like, okay, and there's the line, and she just crossed the line. And uh, she just kept going into the pyro zone, and we're like, and she's just going like this. And so I had to run out there and help wrangle back the people so that, you know, nobody got hurt or anything. It's funny, you know, you can never predict what happens. You can plan and you can, you can rehearse, 
but you never know what's going to happen live when you have people and you deal with emotions. And I think it's that's a funny moment that we, we went through. Uh, but that was at the end of the show, so that ended up being okay. And then fireworks went off, and it was great. I don't think the audience noticed any of that, but those are just some of the things that we deal with behind the scenes that hopefully the audience doesn't ever see. Wow, we're pulling this off, and the client's happy, and the other client's happy, and the CEOs are happy, and I'm like, we can do this. So fast forward, you know, um, we strike the show, Everything's done and we have like a week where we're just kind of like in cool down mode. Now understand, up until this moment, you know, Gabby and I were interacting almost for the last three months on a daily basis. Anytime you're working on an event like this, it's this influx of emotions when, whenever it ends because you're working with these people for a year plus, sometimes a lot longer. Anyone who's worked a contract job or for an LOC, uh, for a traveling event or people who have gone on tour, they, they all can probably relate to this feeling of you come together, you're going through the trenches together, you're working together on a daily basis through problems and issues and, and good times and bad times, and you create this little family. And then when it's over, it's this weird feeling of, okay, now what? And all of a sudden the game stopped and or ended and there was this like void. And I remember about a month later, uh, I had reached out to Gabs. And I remember him asking me if I had thought about coming over to work for GVP. Since your contract there has expired and you're not really, you know, you're wrapping up the budget of, for Transplant Games, once you're done with that, why don't you come over and join our team and, you know, give it a shot. We work well together. We could do some amazing things. I'm keeping my options open. She showed some interest and she was like, oh, let's talk. So I knew that I couldn't bring Gabby to the warehouse because if she had walked in for her interview there, she'd be like, absolutely not. This is like <laughs> Tom and Jerry started a company and this is what, no, it wasn't gonna work. And he said, well, why don't we go grab lunch and we can talk about what that might look like. We met at Perry's and it was me and Justin and his business partner at the time. And we just started talking about kind of what they need and, and what they're looking for and what they would expect out of me. And the conversation extended probably for a couple weeks. There was a lot of back and forth of what this would look like if I came on. And uh, I feel like there was some convincing on my part um, because obviously we didn't have a ton of money. So I had to try and sweeten the deal with it's going to be fun and we work together and you, you're coming in on the ground level and there's going to be an ownership possibility. Like there's so much that you know, you know, you can be like a part of the building blocks of, of this brand new company. And uh, a few weeks later, Gabs called me up and was like, hey, listen, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. And uh, I was like, fantastic. When can you start? And she gave me a start date and I was like, awesome. And I remember at the time, thinking to myself, walking into the warehouse and being like, okay, we're gonna need to, as a man, fix this up as best we can to make this as appealing to her. So that was my task, trying to figure out how to make this tiny little office, and we had an office in the back, look as appealing as possible before she walked in. Because keep in mind, at this point, she hadn't been to our office, our warehouse, she hadn't seen anything. I was very excited at the opportunity and what it was gonna look like. And then I came to their warehouse for the first time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Hello, no one is available to take your call at this time. Please leave a message after the tone. Gabs, I need you to call me as soon as possible. I just got a phone with the lawyers and this thing is not going away. I need you to call me as soon as possible, please. I'm freaking out. 